Hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about approval process. It is one of the automated process in Salesforce. This is going to be a little longer than my usual videos, but um, because I'm going to explain you the scenario on where you should use approval process along with an example and step-by-step -step processes. Um, all right, so let's look at the scenario here. So I have a very simple object called expense object and what it has is uh, two user lookup fields which the user will be inputting uh, himself or herself and there is an expense amount field and expense category. Expense category is nothing but a, a pick list which has different expense categories and based on that it will be routed to a appropriate approvers. So um, also make sure if you don't see the submit for approval here we don't see it because it is already submitted for approval. But in your case, if you do not see submit for approval, make sure you go to the page layout and um, let me show you actually. Go to the page layout and make sure you have submit for approval checked um, on the quick actions here. Mobile and lightning action. When you go there for the first time, you need to overwrite you'll see something like this on here override that and then you can see the submit for approval okay so if you do not see that that is all right uh, going back to our scenario all right um, so I have written it down here if the initial criteria uh, the initial criteria for this approval process is that the amount should be more than hundred dollars all right so if, if your amount is less than hundred dollar you do not need to submit it for approval to get any kind of refund that's the scenario if it is greater than hundred dollar you will need to get approval from your manager for example now we have certain steps or different if and else statements here for example if your category is food and your amount is less than two hundred dollar it should be assigned to your food expense manager for example this one okay and if it is travel expense and less than $200 it should be assigned to your travel expense manager another situation is if the amount is greater than $200 then it has to be assigned to your expense manager now the expense manager is based on your user record okay so every user might have depending upon their depending upon which team they are under they might have different expense managers so it is nothing but a user lookup field on user record itself just like a manager so manager there's a manager it is standard field i have created a custom user lookup field or you can also say hierarchy field called expense manager okay so that's the overall scenario here for this approval process so since we have a little bit of background, let's get started. I already have an active approval process. I'm going to just show you first and then we'll actually do step by step with me, okay? Here, entry criteria. These are the most important things you need to keep in mind, okay? You need to be, if your business asks you to create an approval process, that should be your first question what is the entry criteria because some not all records might need to go through the approval process or sometimes they do so depending upon that we will define an entry criteria this is absolutely important and then you also need to have your assignment email template ready once it is uh, assigned to us approver who should get that email or not who but what should be the format of that email that you will get from your business users they will give you a format and then you just use that format create an email template if you are not sure how to create email template let me know and I can guide you through that um, or there are plenty of resources online if you wanna check it out so email template and then who will be the initial submitter will it be the expense owner himself or will it be somebody else so that is uh, an important question you need to ask and then you have various submission actions like by default Salesforce actually locks the record from being edited um, 
once it is submitted for approval except for admin nobody else can edit it and then multiple steps and that's where we'll be deciding what are the different steps you can see here there's like an if else statement here if this happens do this otherwise go to the next step and then there for each approval step you can also define different actions you want to do maybe you want to email somebody once this is done or create a task field update outbound message so these are different available things you can do on each steps of approval it doesn't have to be if and else okay so it's mostly depending on what your business requires you can add multiple steps here and then there's a final approval actions meaning once it is approved maybe you might want to send an email to the owner itself that hey your expense has been approved right so those are different um, actions you can take also add existing means there will be if you already have some actions workflow actions created you could add those actions here all right um, and then Finally, you can rec lock the record or maybe you can not lock it up to you and the rejection actions. All right, so a lot of talking, right? Let's start actually now. Let's start it. Um, okay. Once we are in a poor process, I'm going to actually deactivate this one and then create a new one and uh, make sure you are on the right object okay by default um, it tends to go to account but go to expense and create a new process you'll see two different options here jump start wizard and standard setup wizard um, I prefer standard setup wizard if your comp if your approval process is going to be complex one prefer this one because it lets you define everything um, in a really good way and a very intuitive way as well so I'm going to choose this one. Jump wizard is um, easier if you just want to get started real quickly. Um, but since I'm going to demo you everything, so why not, right? Expense approval. Let's name it too because, and always, always write description. It is very important. If somebody else wants to know what's happening, they can just pull it up and it tells right there, okay? So it's helpful for your fellow colleagues and yourself as well if you want to look in the future. Specify entry criteria as we discussed it was expense amount greater than 100 Click next and Here the fun part now uh, This one gets very confusing especially if you are writing your first approval process select field for automated approval routing what it means is um, not always in our case if I go to my expense object let me find it first if I go to my expense record right if you have noticed we have two different fields called um, food and travel so and those are um, look up to user field let's wait for it to get loaded all right so we have two lookup fields to use a record on my expense. So on any approval process to define the approval approver for that process, you could either select any of these records, any of these fields because they are lookup to user or even this. That's usually not the case, but you could do that. Um, any of these are your manager record, or even uh, you, you can let them put it manually but you s I'm going to show you something here if you select that next automated approval determined by even though we have different situations where you want to select if it is food go to food or um, travel go to travel we still want to select that for a reason I'm going to show you we'll see that in next steps okay for now standard user fields manager custom user fields expense manager but since we have expense manager, let's click that and keep moving. And then approval assignment email template. Remember I told you about the email template? That's where 
you want to go to and then it will take you to your emails I think I have one created here expense approval and next this is on the detail page itself on the expense page uh, let me show you so right here the fields you want to see you can all define that as well okay it is showing me classic view but um, if you switch to classic that's what you're going, going to see I'm going to say expense amount maybe category as well and if you want to display approval history information you can do that too let's check that and security settings please read through that when you are doing it yourself okay and here initial submitters is usually the expense owner in your case if it is something else you could also select maybe the manager wants to submit for you right you could do that so for now I'm expense owner and then save so that's my first step it will be like okay if you want to create a new one now you want to create a step now or I'm just going to say I'll do this later and go to the actual page and see what we are seeing this is our expense approval too all right so here we are right initial submission actions if you have noticed we did not create this it got created by default and we can also add a field update maybe right maybe I want to say that approval in process it is helpful for like reporting purpose for example you want to say that you know show me all the approval all the records which are in approval right now so you can like define this in process or submitted right so let's do that that's our initial submission actions and here approval steps let's start one by one okay so new approval steps I'm saying food expenses that is our first step and always do not skip the description okay even though it is not required it make it required in your mind um, all right so enter this step if the following criteria are met if you notice here you have only two options for now it does not say go to next step because we do not have a next step so for now we are just going to keep it here and then we're going to come back to this okay so expense category equals food and expense amount less than 200 that is our criteria click next all right so do you see now if you don't have anything on that first step where we selected expense manager that was not a required field by the way you could not select anything and it will still let you save it but if you do that you won't be able to see this field here but we don't need it now we will need it in third step when you create so that's why I wanted you to select that expense manager all right does it make sense and then automatically assign to approvers you could also say let the submitter choose the approval manually which is fine if that's your requirement but I'm going to do it automated so I'm saying related user and who was the user food expense since it is a food criteria right click save and then it will go take you to the page where it's gonna ask do you want to create a new approval action for this step maybe so I'm not going to create it for now because uh, to speed the process but you could say a field update and then you could update it to let's say you could update the same approval step pick list approval step pick list um, to in process maybe all right but I'm just going to say take me to the detail page but you can create those right here as well okay and then I'm going to say new approval step again for the second one and let's say travel expense write the description click next 
and then until this step the criteria are met we do not have anything here because again we don't have any other steps so expense category equals yep it will be travel because that's our condition and then amount less than 200 and by default it says and okay you could also change it by adding the filter logic okay and then we just do the same process as before and select travel expense and we save it ah, I'll do this later meaning you will do this later and as I said, we're going to go back to this one because we need to say else next step, not else approve. So let's go there. Now you see we have three options. So go to next step. If that's not correct, go to next step. Save it. All right, uh, that's our two criteria. Now third criteria is amount greater than $200. So amount greater than 200 and then write a description enter this step the following criteria are met expense amount greater than 200 that's our only criteria next and now we can actually say that just this one expense manager and then click save and make sure you select your approval process actions whatever you want to and again we need to go here and say that if this is not correct go to next step also You see, now we have options here. Go to next step. So you see, we have next step, next step. So if this is the case, do this. Otherwise, go to next step. If this is the case, do this. Otherwise, go to next step. Finally, this step. Okay, so it kind of works like a if-else statements. And finally, you can say, you can add a field update here too, saying that approved and send an email alert for the final approval actions so that's pretty much it for um, just the steps my main focus was on the steps once you are once you are comfortable with the steps adding the actions is a piece of cake because it going it's going to be very easier just to add a new action here right that's that's very easy part I'm not going to show that to you today um, and then obviously Activate it. Okay, so and yeah, a quick side note you can also view the diagram um, of the approval process if you have a nice chart which shows you all the if else statements and everything else which we just did. And also, if you have noticed here, it says one, and if you have multiple. Um, multiple approval steps with multiple criteria like entry criteria itself for example i had expense expense greater than hundred dollar follow this approval process maybe there might be greater than five hundred dollars something else so or multiple scenarios right so you could also do the same thing just like assignment case assignment rules you could say one two three and so on so for the same object that is i hope you enjoyed this and i hope it was helpful for you uh, for whoever was doing the approval process for the first time and please uh, type in comments if you have any questions and uh, or what what else would you like to learn please let me know thank you so much for your time have a good one